I think of the alternate string pull-off or the ASPO as the heart of claw hammer banjo. I'm going to show you how to master it today on Banjo Quest. There are three reasons, at least three, why you should drop whatever you're doing right now and master the alternate string pull-off. The first is stylistically, it is incredibly beautiful. I think of it as claw hammer's gift to the world of stringed instruments. The second reason is it can be blindingly fast. So if you're in a jam situation, if you're playing with a dance band, if you need to arpeggiate with simple patterns underneath your voice and create this beautiful chordal bed for your voice to float on top, the alternate string pull-off should be your go-to. And the third reason is that it is a true test of your coordination between your fretting and striking hands, which I think is a really big deal when you're learning how to play this instrument. We've been playing the alternate string pull-off all week in our Banjo Knot Bootcamp for Fretless Banjo over on Patreon. If you're interested, I'll leave a link below. That's all archived for you to peruse on your own. And the alternate string pull-off kept coming up. So there is a really simple trick that you can use to begin to master it, and it has to do with the coordination between right and left hands. And I call this the set stroke for claw hammer banjo. Let me show you how it works. Let's define terms. What is an alternate string pull-off? It is a four note, eighth note pattern. I'm gonna show you each note right now. First note is a down stroke. Second note is a pull on an adjacent string. Third note is a downstroke, and the last note is an upstroke. We're just gonna focus on a simple vanilla alternate string pull-off in standard G tuning. All together, the alternate string pull-off we're looking at today sounds like this. You can play it faster. faster. And you can put some blinding speed on it. Okay, so what is this set stroke business? The set stroke happens on the very first stroke of this four note pattern. So when I do my initial first step of the ASPO, the down stroke, I am setting into the instrument with both hands. My left middle finger is diving in to the first string, second fret, simultaneous to the down stroke. My thumb goes with me on the right hand. Keep that in mind. The thumb always follows the hand. And what this does for you is that it makes sure your finger on the left hand, your fretting finger for the pull-off, is there before it needs to be. Because here's a little truth. You'll never be late if you're already where you need to be. So we throw. And pull. Now this second pull, let's look at the second step. Set. Our pull happens on the upstroke. Set, pull. You've gotta leave the entire instrument with that right hand. Don't leave the thumb behind. Lift out, out, out with the entire hand. Set, pull. Now we just have a ditty to send it home. Ditty. All together. Set, pull, ditty. Set, pull, ditty. Set. T, one more time, set, pull, T, T. This set stroke idea comes out of me observing students all over the world be chronically late for the pull off. So they'll throw, then they'll set down for the pull, then they'll pull, and then they'll perform the rest of the ASPO. You can already see you're adding pretty much a fifth step. This has to be, because there are four notes, this has to be a four note step. If you add a step in between, you're gonna be messing with the intrinsic eighth note timing of this pattern. You need to be there with your fretting finger before the pull off occurs. So the best place for that to happen is on the initial downstroke of the pattern. Let's visualize this a little bit. I wanna take you in a little bit deeper here. This first tab of this phrase is a really elegant and simple way to notate 
alternate string pull-offs. This is the way I favor doing it for most of my students. For beginners, I prefer to do it this way, where I'm indicating with parentheses where the set stroke is and which fret that set stroke should occur on. Be sure to think of the set stroke as a two-hand move. Don't think of it as an isolated fretting move. We, the reason I call it set is that both hands are setting in, into the instrument before the alternate string pull-off happens. How to work on this? Well, the first thing you need to work on is making sure your bum ditty is strong because if you delete the pull-off from an ASPO pattern, what you have left is a bum ditty. So let me play that for you now. That's gotta be automatic or this isn't going to happen for you. So get the bum ditty automatic with the striking hand. Next, you're gonna work this real slow and I want you to say with your playing, set, pull, ditty, set, pull, ditty, set, pull, ditty, set, pull, ditty. Work it like that and then add some speed to it. If you are interested in perfecting this, hop on over to Patreon. I have an entire tablature sheet filled with exercises and permutations of the alternate string pull-off. Link is in the description below. That does it today. I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.